YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here. And we're going to be coming to you with some Dwarves versus Chaos action. I've got the uh, Thwapa Thwapa Air Force out here. And they're going to be moving in on a Chaos Army that was hoping to hit me with some heavy artillery. And they actually do hit me there with some. That's going to cause a lot of damage. But as soon as I'm able to close the distance with the Hell Cannons, uh, Chaos really doesn't have an answer to my four brimstone guns here. They, the only way to really protect against gyrocopters effectively um, is you need the uh, the raiding horsemen with throwing axes because nothing else that Chaos has is very effective at dealing. So yeah, the two hell cannons, which is a cool idea if you can use them properly against the Dawit, are going to get absolutely slaughtered by gyrocopter with brimstone guns. So these little Chaos stunties are going to be reminded why they're no longer accepted amongst the ranks of Dawi for having shaved their heads. Yeah, this this one's already wrecked. I knocked all the guys off the gun, and we're going to move forward to the other. So I'm going to focus out the Hell Cannon so that I can bring my infantry core down. The Chaos Army, um, it's something I wish you could see more often, but these guys aren't very good. <laughs> so Chaos Warriors aren't great units, which is unfortunate because they look really scary. They look really cool and um, really ought to be better units. They have fantastic armor and good defense. Um, and they're good against unarmored units, but they cost a lot, and they don't have immunity to fear or terror, and it really makes them, for the most part, pretty awful units. Uh, Chaos Warriors and Chaos Warriors with Halberds. Now, Halberds can be useful sometimes in fending off large units, but again, the lack of um, immunity to psychology amongst Chaos Warriors is a big problem. And I think that if the Chaos Warriors army uh, had some kind of pennant or something you could put on your leader, that gave certain Chaos Warrior units immunity to psychology would be a huge deal. Um, there's a couple of aspiring champions here, and I like that our Kaon's leading the army. You don't see this guy too often either. His um, lore of uh, fire here it could actually be useful against the Dwarves. It can give extra armor piercing damage, but the problem is, is the Chaos player brought a non-armor piercing army versus an all-armored faction, as I played as the Dawei, so not real good pick, and that's kind of what I wanted to talk about in this video. First of all, I just want to get you some cool cinematics. Um, so this, aren't, this this battle is not going to be some kind of tactical triumph. I want it to be more of a discussion. Um, I don't know if this player was new, or just you know learning the ropes, or if he just wanted to try this army, uh, but I want to talk about it because I do run into a lot of new people. So whether or not this particular player was new um, doesn't matter. I, I kind of want to just talk about this from the perspective of a new player, and you're trying to play online one of the good things to do is just to get a basic idea of what each faction is good at and that way whenever you're picking to play against them you have a basic idea of where to start in terms of how to counter look at this sweet cinematics here flamestorm it's not going to end up doing a whole lot to me because i stay on the move it would have had i sat still but the unpredictable nature of vortex spells comes into play here that is beautiful though this game really does look good so there's going to be a clash of lines here so Chaos Warriors clashing with um, uh, Stunties. I sh shouldn't say Stunties. My proud Dawi here. There's no green skins involved, so I shouldn't be calling them Stunties. And so a pretty big infantry clash. I have a Rune Lord and two Rune Smiths are helping in the center. And then I bring my Air Force into play here and line it up right over the top of the Chaos Infantry. And you know where this is going. Drop the bombs, men. Drop the bombs. So the Dwarves are actually, in my opinion, a pretty decent faction against Chaos. Um, the only thing that the Dwarves really lack versus Chaos is a good counter to Chariots. And Gyrocopters and Brimstone Guns can somewhat help against those Chariots. Uh, but it's still, the, the Chaos Warriors definitely have things that can hurt the Dwarves. They have decent armor-piercing infantry, but more importantly, they have some specialty units. Flyers, um, the Hell Cannons can be useful in the right situations, they weren't here. Raiding Horsemen can help get rid of Gyrocopters with Brimstone Guns. Chaos have plenty of good Flyers, which can trouble the Dwarves. And then they also have uh, good Cavalry and Monsters. I'm actually going to run away with these Rangers. I've used the uh, Marked by Ulthar over here with my Ulthar's Raiders. And they're going to continue to put Throwing Axes and then the Gyrocopters firing away. So you can see that the first unit of Halberds got wrecked. Uh, warriors, with, or, uh, warriors with Halberds are not a good matchup against this. This is an all-armor-piercing infantry unit. These guys are decent at melee as well. So you can see that the infantry fights are continuing over here. Chaos Warriors are tanky, 
when their leadership can hold and they're not not going to be outflanked. Um, and the aspiring champions here, I think, were a nice touch in terms of trying to keep them in the fight longer. But again, they just don't have the armor piercing capability. And although they might do good against my standard core warriors, they won't do good against my warriors with great weapons. And then my runesmith and uh, rune lord are going to be almost unchallenged here. Because if you think about it, with this chaos army, the stunties always have good hero. Or stunties, the dwarves. I'm so used to like saying the green skin version of it. The dwarves are always going to have good heroes. And if you don't bring something to kill those heroes, you're going to be in trouble. And in this case, our Kaon is just really not meant to kill dwarf heroes. He's not very good at it. Look at this being axed in the back by my rangers. And then after getting a couple of throws in, I'm going to charge forward and let the rangers do their thing in melee. So definitely some fun cinematics here. But yeah, so, I mean, in this case, I, I just think my opponent made a lot of kind of disastrous picks, and I'm not saying that to be mean to him. He's a nice guy. Like, as soon as he saw all the gyrocopters, he's like, oh, dang, well, he's like, I probably should have planned for that. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so, I mean, he is a nice guy. There was, obviously, I'm not showing this to try and, like, show off, so I just, it had some cool cinematics in it with the bombings, and it was cool to see our K on, and I like seeing people try to use Chaos Warriors. The unfortunate reality of it is that they're not very good. Um, now, there's going to be some interesting Regiment of Renown units released, and I'm curious to see how it impacts the overall Chaos armies. I think Chaos can definitely be a competitive faction with just about any other faction out there aside from the Vampires, um, especially if someone knows how to use them well. But uh, in this case, I, I just I had every advantage I needed. My opponent spent a ton of money on artillery. They got absolutely shut down because he couldn't protect it from the air. He had good protection from the ground, but again, the choices here... Why bring halberds against the dwarves? They have nothing large. So don't bring halberds because they don't have shields. And they're not going to do any good against dwarf infantry. Chaos warriors, can you bring these guys versus the dwarves? Yeah, maybe a unit or two if you're just looking for a unit to be tanky somewhere. Because tanky they are. They have a lot of armor and they have good melee defense and a big shield, which contributes to that melee defense. But how many of these guys you want to bring uh, is probably if just few is all you would really want. And it, it's probably because these guys... Um, just don't have like they're not going to do a lot of bang for their buck they're slow and the dwarves have plenty of units to counter them so in my opinion I, I think the way i like to take on the dwarves is definitely to bring some flyers with chaos it keeps the dwarves guessing on where you're going to land and it keeps the dwarves busy and then if you mix it up with some armor piercing infantry some monsters the both either flying or on the ground or some combination of the two i don't disagree with the hell cannon pick from time to time the thing is is if the dawi do counter your hell cannon successfully you're going to have an uphill battle. And I think Forsaken are always a good pick against the Dwarves, especially, you know, like my Ranger units. A Forsaken unit would have been perfect. I wouldn't have been able to protect my Ranger units easily um, from Forsaken. They're fast-moving, and they do really good against units that have lower armor. Now, granted, Dwarf Skirmishers still have pretty decent armor, but the Forsaken would still get the job done. So I think that a couple of Forsaken, just a couple, are a good pick. And then I actually really like the Everwatcher as a pick against the dwarves he's just so disruptive and with the lore of metal you can actually pull away armor you can debuff stunties um, and stuff like that so they can actually be he can be pretty handy um, so I don't know there's a lot of different ways that chaos can take it but anyway I appreciate the game for my opponent and like I said just use this as an opportunity if you're new kind of get a feel for what the factions are good at and just to give you a quick overview wood elves are fast and they punch hard both with certain infantry units and with archers but they're glass. They break easy in terms of they don't have armor or a lot of shields sometimes and stuff like that. So Wood Elves are vulnerable to long range attacks from artillery on open ground. Um, so that that's kind of, the Wood Elves are all about speed and hit and run tactics. The Beastmen are all about um, uh, fast, hard hitting, unarmored infantry. And they're gonna do good against unarmored factions or factions who can't wield strong infantry to counter them. Um, and a beastman uh, rush is going to rely on disruption and good flanking and fast attacks. Uh, Bretonia is a, a kind of a more all-around focus, but they, they have solid uh, leadership buffing capabilities. And there's a couple of lords they have that make them dangerous. Lewin is a very good lord in terms of being very aggressive and very offensive, if that's what you're looking for. He can fly on Beaky, and he can debuff enemies with his Sword of Coron. Combine that with the fact that you can bring a huge number of cheap peasant infantry units and then keep them on the battlefield for a long time with a Grail Relic. 
and then be supported by either decent archers and superior cavalry. That's really the advantage of Bretonia is their their flexibility between infantry and um, and really good cavalry. Uh, the Empire is kind of like your all-around factions, a jack of all trades and probably a master of none. Uh, but they have a little bit of everything that's good and a lot of different support units and stuff to choose from. So the Empire is probably one of your more diversified rosters. So countering them can be tricky because your opponents can bring pretty much anything to counter, just about anything. So the Empire is probably the more tricky one to uh, pick against. Um, the Vampires, of course, are a rush-only faction who have the ability to heal and to maintain their presence on the battlefield much longer than some factions because you can't fear or terror route them. They can disintegrate if their leadership gets low enough. They have a variety of lords, both in the air and on the ground. They have very powerful magic in the form of lore of death and lore of vampires. Um, so the vampires are dangerous in the sense that they can overwhelm you, they can outlast, they can outgrind. They also have particularly deadly cavalry in the form of blood knights. And the vampires have access to some extremely good monsters in the form of cryptors and uh, vargulfs, both very useful. And then stuff like support units like mortis engines and stuff so the vampires are definitely a dangerous faction to most other factions greenskins again are a mostly rushy infantry faction that somewhat suffers from low leadership but they have certain specialty units like savage orcs that are really good against unarmored foes and can be extremely effective at what they do for the price but also the greenskins just have some really hard hitting infantry Black Orcs are not something you typically want to tangle with. They're very good. And then there's specialty infantry units too, like Night Goblins with poison, Skulkers that can deploy and stalk, and they have uh, a armor piercing attack. Very cheap heroes with the Goblin Big Boss. For only 500, you can get a poison Goblin Big Boss up on a spider. Um, and then a variety of Lords too, uh, some of which are spellcasters as well, including Lore of Death. Um, there's a pretty big variety to the Greenskins and their hard-hitting infantry, along with a few decent support units like Rusty Errors, Goblin Archers can be worth their weight sometimes, these armor-piercing uh, skirmishing cavalry, and then pretty solid monsters, along with some decent artillery. It leaves the Greenskins as a very hard-hitting infantry faction that definitely has the capability to switch it up a little though and be able to skirmish and go long range when necessary, so the Greenskins I would say that typically you're going to be countering a lot of hard-hitting infantry, but don't always count out that odd greenskin strategy that might rely on something different. Dwarves are your armored defensive wall, basically. So typically you're going to expect them to sit back, camp, shoot at you from long distance, lots of skirmishers usually, uh, but they can also have some deadly infantry rushes too that you got to watch out for because they're like a wall of iron. Again, armor piercing is the key to defeating these guys. They also have a weird vanguard army that can get you from time to time, so watch out for that if you're an unarmored faction that doesn't have a lot of defense against it. Chaos is another interesting faction. Again, just for those maybe not as familiar with them, maybe you're just getting into Warhammer because Warhammer 2 is coming out. Um, Chaos has a lot to offer. They have well-armored infantry, and when it comes to campaign, their infantry is probably some of the best in the game. Uh, but in, in multiplayer, they can be countered quite easily just because of their high cost for performance. Uh, their performance is good, they're just easy to kill uh, because they cost so much that you can usually focus them down with something your own. They do have a good selection of chariots and they have decent cavalry, albeit expensive. And skirmishers is their big limitation. Chaos is typically going to have to rush. They do have access to both uh, to lore of death, metal, and shadows, and fire. So they have a pretty wide variety of magic and they have very good flyers because they can field zombie or er, chaos dragons, feral manticores, manticores, all kinds of stuff. And then dragon ogre shagoths give them a very strong tool as well. So, I, uh, and then I think I, we already yeah we already mentioned beastmen and there's a couple of sub factions that are just branches of these these main factions I said. So that's pretty much a rundown of the factions. So keep those things in mind if you're if you're coming on to play multiplayer or even campaign for that matter. That's kind of the base you have to set in your head. You need to know the base of these factions. And then when you're building your army, do your best to think about what would my opponent bring? What do I think they're gonna bring? And what can I bring to help counter that? So I hope this was helpful. Um, if you have any tips for beginners, please put them down in the comments. Um, always good to have beginners in the game. Uh, and, and again, I'm not saying that my opponent was a beginner. He may not have been. Uh, he may have just chosen the wrong army. Um, but in any case, I just like giving these tips because I want new people to join in on this community. It's a lot of fun 
I think if you spend some time in multiplayer, you'll enjoy it. It can be a tough learning curve, but don't give up. Um, I lose battles frequently, and I've been playing the Total War series for darn near 10 years now. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not something that you're just going to instantly be good at. Do hope you all enjoyed it. Appreciate my sponsor, MSI, for providing me with awesome hardware and keeping my stuff up to date. And I love making these videos for you, and I appreciate you all being here every day. I hope you like watching them, and I hope you're having a great weekend. Air of Carthage signing out for now. I'll see you soon in some more content.